What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School and uh, we're just going to kind of talk today about uh, what's going on uh, with gun control, um, AR-15s, just in general since Florida. Again, very horrible, horrible thing done by a horrible, horrible person. And um, let me... <laughs> Let me go ahead and say, if, if my language might get a little out of control today, um, then I get a little irritated sometimes, things fly out of my mouth, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize um, for that right now. Um, I've got uh, just some stuff I went and, and looked up with everything that's going on because we need to go ahead and set a few things straight. These so-called experts that they have on TV talking about this stuff are not experts but I can see where their confusion comes into play because just going in and, and looking up certain things you see so much going on um, just let's see uh, something Something I found here was you've got uh, one guy that was saying 30 bullets in half a second. Never seen that done before. But I'm not one of those that's going to say uh, it's, it's impossible. Anything's possible. Uh, I found several different places uh, that talked about the rate of fire for an AR. And is some of them said 500 rounds per minute. Some of them said 800 rounds per minute. Some of them said 1,100 rounds per minute. I even saw one, uh, one website uh, that said 1,200 rounds per minute. So uh, I, I see why these experts aren't um, really sure of what they're talking about because the places they're getting their information from um, isn't even right. Uh, what was the other thing I saw? I've just kind of uh, I've been making notes of this stuff as I was going through uh, looking up just certain some statistics that we're going to be going over uh, here shortly. Uh, there was one thing where uh, supposedly he was a lieutenant army lieutenant colonel. Uh, it was on I think CNN. I haven't looked at the clip yet to see you know exactly what was discussed but I guess they're saying he said full semi-auto there's no full semi-auto semi-automatic full automatic and it's not uh, what was it they said fully automatic mode semi-automatic fully automatic you know I'm not trying to make anybody look dumb um, I know that's what it seems right now but we've got to make sure we're getting our facts straight here and if you're going to talk to experts then talk to experts just because I don't agree with gun control or some of the things that our people are warning right now doesn't mean I'm not going to talk to you about it I'm always open for discussion I'm sure some of you trolls out there are going to start hitting me up when I start going over some of these statistics because it goes against your beliefs and, and your values and, and you know I know how people hate to have their beliefs and their values you know torn apart but it's semi-automatic it's fully automatic there's no fully automatic mode this isn't a smartphone semi-automatic fully automatic let's see what else was there somebody um, had said you could buy an AR for $130. Please, somebody go tell me where in Florida you can go buy an AR for $130. Because I'm going to be there in a heartbeat. I mean, you cannot buy an AR for $130. I'm sorry. You can, no, you're going to be over $500. I haven't found one that, that's been under $500. I think that was the cheapest that I found. Um, and then of course assault rifle assault style rifles assault style weapons blah 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 
This is an AR, an Armalite -like rifle, not assault rifle. This is only becomes an assault rifle if I walk over and I smack you in the freaking head with it. Then it becomes an assault rifle because I just assaulted you. I'll give you military style rifle. Yes, this is a military style rifle. And by God, if I want to go hunt with it, I can go hunt with it. It's a lot easier to pull the trigger than have to sit there and work a bolt at you. It's not because I'm a bad shot. I'm probably not even going to load the magazine up to 30 rounds. But by God, if I want to go hunt with it, I'm going to go hunt with it. It is an AR. It is not, there's nothing assault about it until somebody walks up and smacks you over the head with it. And while we're on this thing with magazines, this is a magazine. This is a magazine. These are what the bullets go in. And then they go into the weapon. This, this is a clip. This right here is a clip. Do we see the differences? This is not a clip. This is a clip. Magazine, clip. Magazine, clip. Magazine, clip. And it's not a 30 magazine clip. I don't even... It's a magazine. It is a magazine. Yes, there are guns that take clips. This is a clip that will go into a rifle. Most of your weapons now, or your guns and rifles now, take magazines. This is for a pistol. This is for a rifle. Magazines, people. I mean, it's just, um, it's, it's ridiculous. These experts are not experts, and you people are out there listening to them. Yeah, I'm probably going to end up having some butthurt, mad people today, but I really don't care. You know, y'all would just want to start taking guns away. You know, the, just like bump stocks. Let's let's talk about bump stocks. I'll be honest, I don't like bump stocks. Do I have bump stocks? No. Have I used them? Yeah. Are they fun? They're great. But uh, what was it when I first? First guy there, the guy said it was, uh, what was it he said? It's a fun way to make a lot of money go bang. I mean, they're fun. There's no practicality to them. Do I think they should be banned? No. It's all part of what falls under the Second Amendment. You know, I don't, and then you've got the people that talk about, oh, well, the Second Amendment was meant for muzzle loaders, not, you know, military style rifles. Oh, I'm sorry, assault weapons, that's, that's what y'all say, assault weapons. So uh, if that's the case, then the First Amendment was not meant for the internet. But everybody seems to run to the First Amendment when people try to use the internet and say it's not free speech. You know, everybody wants to take the guns away thinking, oh, it's going to be safe, it's not going to be safe. Because I can tell you what's going to happen. The government's going to take control. Look at the past. Look at the past. Because all you people running around protesting, if they take the guns away, then what's next? You better freaking believe it. It's going to be free speech. And they're just going to start whacking away at the Constitution. And then there goes your rights. So your Miranda rights and all that stuff, you know. They've got to have a search warrant to come into your house. You know, all that stuff's going to be gone. I mean, I hate to say it. It's about power. Power can be seductive. I mean, it's, that's, that's what it boils down to. They want control, which is they're going to have power. I mean, it's... Stop listening to the experts that they have on the news. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say all of them aren't experts. Yes, I have seen some very credible people on the news talking about this stuff. Mind and I don't really watch the news that much, but there have been very 
uh, I guess you could say, experts in the field that have been there. But the majority of the people that are getting this information and giving this information are not experts. It shows right here in what people are saying. Yeah, let's, it all boils down to being safe. Taking guns away is not being safe. You know, how bad would have the shooting in Texas at that church been if the guy hadn't have been there and been armed? And an NRA member, but no, NRA are terrorists. I mean, come on, people. Stop blaming other people. That's, that's really, really what the, the big thing boils down to here is, is what we've created in society and blaming everybody else. Just like this whole Tide Pods, you know, there were lawmakers that came out and said, well, they shouldn't make the pods look so edible. Who, who the freak looks at a Tide Pod and goes, hmm, that looks good. I mean, come on. It's... Stop blaming other people. It's not the NRA's fault with what happened in Florida. You know, and then you you want us to, is it just, oh God, you people just, it absolutely amaze me. Then you sit here and call President Trump Hitler and you want him to take guns away. Look at what Hitler did when he took guns away. It was genocide. Come on. It's, it's just ridiculous. If you want to make our schools safer, good, taking guns away is not the problem. Taking assault weapons away are not the problem. And again, it's not assault weapons. It's, if you want to go military style, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Because uh, that's what it is. It's a military style weapon. I mean, Jesus. You know, I saw an article the other day where Pelosi and Schumer want to give the FBI $300 million to investigate this whole Russian crime. I mean, come on, people. If you work as hard to make our schools safer as y'all are to try to get him out of office, we probably wouldn't have had that issue in Florida. And I mean, it's not, it's not just Democrats, it's Republicans too, because you got Republicans that don't like you. You people need to pull your heads out your asses and start working together. If you want to take $300 million, give it to the free, spread that through the country. Bulletproof glass on the windows, bulletproof doors. Should schools be like that? No, but it's the world we live in. It has nothing to do with Guns, absolutely nothing. It, so let's take a, let's take a look at China. They don't allow citizens to have guns. Uh, when you've got a stabbing, uh, one I found from 2014, 29 dead. So the girl that was standing on TV talking about if he'd have had a knife, and this many people wouldn't have been dead. Oh well, that proves you wrong right there. Uh, there was one in a Pennsylvania high school, 22 dead. It was a knife, it wasn't a gun. Killed more people. I mean, bad people are gonna do bad things. Uh, let's see, there was a uh, China at a primary school with a knife, 24 dead. Then from 2010 to 2012, there were random school attacks using a knife, or a hammer or a cleaver. I think in total 115 injured, uh, probably right around that, that were killed somewhere close to 100. And I mean, these are nursery schools, elementary schools, primary schools. So taking guns away is not gonna fix the problem. It's just not. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but we, we've got to, bulletproof glass, metal detectors, you know, that's what that 300 million needs to be going to. More than, you know, one resource officer in the school where my daughter goes to school, they've only got one resource officer. And I mean, I'm, no, I'm not gonna say that. My hat's off to law enforcement and, and what they do, but there needs to be more training with these resource officers. I talked to uh, a teacher 
and one of the other school districts at another school, they share a resource officer with another school. You freaking kidding me? You know, it, oh, we don't have, need to have armed veterans walking around the school. By God, look at the freaking White House. Look how many armed guards are on or around that place. Why is he any more important than our children? Why, why do we not have that kind of security around our schools? Because, I mean, you can use cars and bombs. Look at what the people in Boston did. Those were crock pots. We're not out banning crock pots. Bad people are going to do bad things. I'm sorry, we should have the same security at our schools that they have at the freaking White House. That's our future, people. That's your kid. That's my kid. You know, do, do you not think I've had conversations with my child about what she needs to do if something ever happens? Yes, it's sad that we've got to do that, but that's, that's the world that we live in now. There's crazy freaking people that are going to do crazy bad things. You need to talk to your children and see what their plans are. I mean, the teachers aren't even getting the adequate training. I'm pretty sure that it, if you want to do something with $300 million, that's what it needs to be. And I hate to say it, no, they're, they're not armed guards. They are teachers, but by God, if that can save kids, so be it. Let them carry. I mean, it's, it just baffles me. Taking guns away is not the problem. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. Uh, there was something I found here from the National Safety Council. Guns are used 80% more often to protect lives than used to commit crimes. Then there was uh, another study that showed uh, guns are used two and a half million times per year in self-defense. And I've, I, now... I don't know, that seems a little far-fetched. You know, I will say some of the stuff that I was looking at, um, the U.S. is number one on the list for firearm ownership. I mean, th that's the whole purpose of the Constitution. Look at some of these countries that, that aren't. You know, we were, let's see, there were 88.8 .8 per 100 citizens, 650 million civilian on firearms worldwide, uh, the U.S. owns 270 million of these. I mean, we should be at the top. Uh, we were, this is one we were not at the top. We were 28th in the world uh, for gun murders per 100 people. So, I, I mean, the, the statistics are there. But people don't want to listen to it because it goes against their beliefs and their values. You know, from 1992 to 2011, the so regulations became less restricted and they weren't demonized. Guns weren't demonized and crime fell from 757.7 to 386.3 per 100,000 people. Then in that time frame, the murder rate fell from 9.3 to 4.7 per 100,000 people. But no, we're, we're much safer without guns. I mean, come on, look at Chicago. Chicago's got probably the strictest. Some places call it the murder capital of the world. I mean, it's proven. Uh, let's see, I went, you know, Australia. It was what, uh, 96, 97, something like that when they did it. And after they put in their gun ban, murders increased by almost 19%. And armed robberies went up 69%. So it, it's in the statistics, people. I mean, come on. It, that's No. There's other ways that we can protect our children. Taking guns away is not the problem. And then you can sit there and say, oh, we're just going to ban bump stocks. What's next? If you start there, we're going down a slippery road. It, so, uh, 
it, it just you want to turn it over to the people that failed? You want to turn everything over to the people that failed? The sheriff's office, well, not the whole sheriff's office, the deputies. That's who you want to give our guns up. And no, I'm not saying all of them are like that, but I'm sorry. You know what your job is going to be when you sign up to become a cop. Since we're gonna, since I brought this up, you know what could possibly happen being a cop. When I signed up for the military, I knew what could possibly happen. And it's, it was funny hearing this stuff come out because it got me thinking when I was going through boot camp, we were going through uh, class, you know, they're teaching the history of the Marine Corps, all kind of things like that. We're sitting in the class. There's, I don't know, four or five different platoons in there. This kid comes running in to a gunny. Hands him a piece of paper and you know, he starts reading it. And you kind of start seeing his facial expressions change. And you know, everybody's kind of starting to mum a little bit. They're hollering at us, telling us to shut up. So then he's done reading. He stops, looks at everybody, tells us we need to pay attention. He starts saying that a plane was shot down in a no-fly zone over Iraq. We're going to be go ahead and rushed out um, to the rifle range to get qualified and finish up boot camp, and then you'll be sent to your prospective duty stations and possibly end up in Iraq. I won't lie. I was like, shit, I wasn't expecting it to be this quick, you know. But it was what I signed up to do. Dude next to me started bawling, crying. I mean, he was, I don't know, 6'2", 6'3", 240, 250, probably played linebacker through high school. And I mean, he started crying. Some dude started to run for the door, like literally running, trying to get the hell up out of there. I was looking around like, what the hell did you think you were getting yourself into? You know what your job is as a law enforcement officer. It is to protect people. I don't care what somebody is telling you or what policies are. By God, if you're hearing gunshots and it's involving children, you need to get your motherfucking ass in there and do something. And all you people sitting around calling Trump or whatever because he said he would get in there and do something. You don't know. All you freaking trolls, don't do that, don't do that. Playing Call of Duty thinking you know what the hell you're doing. Screw you. You, uh, you people should have been in there doing your damn jobs. This, ridiculous. You're damn right I would rather have armed veterans in front of my daughter's school. Stupid. And you want us to trust the government and their employees. Well, so that when stuff like that happened, I kind of went back and started looking into everybody remembers Fast and Furious. And that was from September 2009 to December 2010. They were watching the sale of 2,500 plus guns for people that were working for the cartel that were coming up here buying them and then taking them down there to the cartel. And what got them caught is December 15, 2010, the border agent Brian Terry was killed. One of the guns left behind was from this sale. And they were trying to say that they were monitoring the guns and seeing where they were going to try to catch, you know, high level cartel people. And come to find out only two of them, two, out of 2,500 guns, had a GP, GPS device in it. I think there was a little bit more going on there. You know, I think, you know, that was it, it, something to, to fit their agenda. And then there toward the end, you know, Obama was talking about, well, he didn't know anything about this, didn't know anything about it. But then when there's documents that were probably going to incriminate him, um, he set an executive privilege to stop the evidence from being in. 
this, you know, you got to be kidding me. You people want gun, I'm telling you, gun control will be the end of a free America. Or I should say a gun ban. It will be. I mean, it's, no, that's not the answer. You know, I'm sorry. There was something I found because my daughter started asking me about the American Revolution and talking about some of this stuff and what started it. And, you know, people have always said taxes and this and that. You know, it's pretty funny. We're right back to, you know, chasing our own tails. We're paying ridiculous taxes. and But what it boiled down to from what I found, and it was pretty interesting the way they, they talked about it, and they talked about um, John Knox was a big, I guess, part of the kind of how, I shouldn't say he was part or why the American Revolution started, but one of his things is there were four vows for a free and just republic. The first one was the civil magistrate makes to God and govern people with God's supremacy and God's sovereignty. The second makes to the people and will protect the people according to the standards of God's law. The third was the people make to magistrate and as long as the magistrate stays faithful to God. And magistrate means pretty much being who's in charge, the king, if you want to say the government in a, in a situation. And then four, was people make the God to his faith and be faithful people to him. So what happened was the king had broken those vows because it wasn't about God, it was about him. So again, that's one. Civil master makes to God and govern people with God's supremacy and God's sovereignty. So that right there was part of it. And I mean, you can call me what you want. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and just, justify anything. But I mean, that's really what Trump is trying to put back into place here. And then you want to criticize, you know, the view sitting there criticizing Mike Pence for prayer and stuff. And then I saw a thing yesterday where people started bashing Chris Pratt for reaching out and telling, you know, Kevin Smith that, you know, about prayers and stuff. I mean, this is this is part of the problem. I mean, when I read this, I, I was like, hey, this was really kind of the direction the last administration was going. But, I mean, if you really look now, once I saw this, you really start looking at the Constitution and stuff, there's a, there, this, it ties back to a lot of this. So four vows for a free and just republic. The first, civil magistrate makes to God and govern people with God's supremacy and God's sovereignty. Makes to the people and will protect the people according to the standards of God's law. God's law. Not people law. God's law. I think that's where we've, we've kind of started really losing our way. No, I'm not going to sit here and start preaching, you know. I don't go to church probably like I should, you know, because that's when a lot of my classes are. So, you know, there's sacrifices that have had to been, been made. But, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I don't believe in it. I mean, no. That, that's but And then third, people make to magistrate and as long as the magistrate stays faithful to God. And people stay faithful as well. So those, I mean, those, that's, <laughs> this is very interesting once I found this. It, it was, I see that's, that's kind of where they were going to as far as a tyrannical king. He had broken the vows. You know, it's, it really does look like where we were headed in the last administration. 
there's still people in, in Congress and Senate that have broken and continue to break these vows. I mean, it, it's a little bit ridiculous here. There was also a quote I found from James Madison that he said, once a man is elected to office, don't give him more power than you want him to use or he will use it. it, it it's power. It's addictive. It's seductive. We don't need to be handing it over to the government. I mean, that, that's the whole purpose of democracy. You know, look at Switzerland. Let's take a look at Switzerland. You know, it's one of the freest nations in terms of gun ownership. Uh, what was it? Uh, they've got the lowest violent crime rate in the world, and it's almost 50% less uh, than the U.S. per capita. I mean, they and they go out and educate and they teach, and all their citizens are armed. Hell, they even have, uh, I forgot what the city was, I didn't write that down. I don't think I wrote that down. I wish I'd have wrote that down. But they have a city where everybody goes, and it, it, they, it's almost like what your competition shooters are doing here in the U.S. But it's not just competition shooters. It's everybody. Everybody owns a gun. Everybody goes out. I said nothing. I'll tell you right now, crap like that won't happen around here. It just won't. I mean, we. We've got to stop thinking that giving the government power is going to make us safer. It's not. That's proven with what I read about China. Those were knives. Hammers, cleavers. You know, the Boston during the marathon was crock pots turned into bombs, people making pop bombs. Look at what the Unabomber did. I mean, bad people are going to do bad stuff. And punishing law-abiding citizens is not the way to do it. I mean, if, if they don't need to be armed, then all you celebrities run, sitting here running your mouths with your armed guards don't have armed guards. Just like what I was talking about earlier. I'm sorry, but we need the same security at schools that we have at the White House. Plain and simple. I mean, we've, we've got to got to really pull our heads out our asses. I watched a video the other day and they asked the guy, you know, where do you see America in 15 or 20 years? And he even said that, you know, that that was a, a really deep question. It is. It does, he said, it depends on what we do right now. And this is a former California congressman. It does depend on what we do right now. Because like he said, it could either be the greatest, freest nation in the world or it can be talked about as, remember when America was free. Because taking guns away is leading down a very slippery slope. And anything that you start banning is leading down that road. It just baffles me. And then you sit there or you say we don't need weapons of war. Most of you people have never even been to war. So weapons of war, that's a weapon of war. This is a weapon of war. Weapons of war are weapons of opportunity. So don't sit here and say, we, my God, this right here is a freaking weapon of war. Weapons of war. Weapons of war are weapons of opportunity. So if you want to sit and call a gun this a weapon of war, you need to get your shit straight. It's just ridiculous what's going on and what is being said out there. And what It's in the statistics. Y'all, you can go and find these statistics just like I did. You know, and then you can go and find statistics about 
guns that are wrong because the people that are putting this out there don't even know what the hell they're talking about. So we've, we've got to pull our heads out of our asses, people. Start working together on how we make everything safe and not how do we take things away to try to make it safe. So this is something I just had wanted to go and kind of get some facts and discuss and, and put it out there and see what people think. So all you trolls out there, have at it. I, I really don't care what you think or what you say. Always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.